Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today, we gather to explore a profound truth that lies at the heart of our faith, God's grace. This divine gift is not just a theological concept, but a transformative power that shapes our lives and our relationship with our Creator. As we delve into this topic, let us open our hearts and minds to the wonder of God's grace, which is truly more than we deserve. Imagine, if you will, a love so vast and unconditional that it embraces us in our most unlovable moments. Picture of forgiveness so complete that it washes away our deepest regrets and failures. Envision a power so gentle yet so mighty that it can transform the hardest of hearts and the most broken of lives. This, my dear friends, is the essence of God's grace. In a world that often operates on the principle of merit, where we're taught that we must earn every good thing, God's grace stands in stark contrast. It is a gift freely given, not because of our worthiness, but because of God's boundless love. The psalmist reminds us in Psalm chapter 103 verse 10 11, KJV, He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward him that fear him. Consider for a moment the implications of this truth. No matter where you are in your journey of faith, whether you're feeling close to God or distant, whether you're celebrating victories or struggling with defeats, God's grace is available to you. It's not reserved for the perfect or the pious, it's offered freely to all who would receive it. This grace is not a one-time event, but a continuous flow of God's love and favor in our lives. It meets us in our everyday struggles, our moments of doubt, our seasons of joy, and our periods of growth. It's the gentle whisper that assures us of God's presence when we feel alone, the strength that upholds us when we are weak, and the hope that sustains us when we can't see the way forward. As we embark on this exploration of God's grace, I invite you to set aside any preconceived notions or past experiences that might limit your understanding. Let's approach this topic with fresh eyes and open hearts, ready to be amazed anew by the depth and breadth of God's love for us. In the coming moments, we'll delve deeper into what the scriptures teach us about grace, examine how it manifests in our lives, and consider how we can respond to this incredible gift. My prayer is that by the end of our time together, each of us will have a renewed appreciation for God's grace and a deeper desire to live in the light of this transformative truth. So, let us begin this journey of discovery, ready to be touched, changed, and empowered by the grace of our loving God. Opening Prayer Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful hearts, seeking to understand the depth of your grace. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to receive the truth of your word. May your spirit guide us as we delve into the richness of your grace. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 1. Understanding grace. Grace, in its simplest form, is God's unmerited favor towards us. The Apostle Paul beautifully captures this in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 9, KJV, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Reflect on these words for a moment. Our salvation, our very relationship with God, is not something we earn or achieve. It is a gift, freely given by our loving Father. This grace is not dependent on our actions or worthiness, but on God's boundless love for us. To truly grasp the concept of grace, we must first acknowledge our own inadequacy. In Romans chapter 3 verse 23, KJV, Paul reminds us, for all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. This universal condition of sinfulness means that, left to our own devices, we are separated from God. We cannot bridge this gap through our own efforts or good deeds. This is where grace enters the picture. It's God reaching out to us when we could not reach him. It's divine love extending beyond our failures and shortcomings. Grace is the hand of God lifting us out of the mire of our sins and setting our feet on solid ground. Consider the profound implications of this truth. If salvation were based on our works or merit, it would always be uncertain. We would constantly question whether we've done enough, been good enough, or sacrificed enough. But because it's by grace, our salvation is secure in God's promise, not in our performance. Moreover, grace levels the playing field. It doesn't discriminate based on social status, educational background, or moral track record. The self-righteous religious leader and the repentant criminal on the cross stand on equal footing before God's grace. As Paul states in Romans chapter 3 verse 24, KJV, 
We are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, but grace goes beyond just forgiveness of sins. It's the ongoing, sustaining power of God in our lives. It's what enables us to live for him, to grow in faith, and to become more like Christ. Paul testifies to this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10, KJV, but by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Understanding grace also means recognizing its costliness. While it's free to us, it came at an immense price the life of God's own Son. Jesus Christ, in his death on the cross, became the ultimate expression of God's grace. He took upon himself the punishment we deserved, so that we might receive the favor we could never earn. As we delve deeper into the concept of grace, let us marvel at its simplicity and its profundity. It's simple enough for a child to grasp God loves us and offers us forgiveness freely. Yet it's so profound that we could spend a lifetime exploring its depths and never fully comprehend the magnitude of this gift. In the light of this understanding, may we approach God with humility and gratitude, recognizing that every spiritual blessing we enjoy is a result of His grace. And may this realization transform not only our relationship with God but also how we view and treat others, extending to them the same grace we have so abundantly received. 2. The abundance of God's grace. God's grace is not meager or limited. It is abundant, overflowing, and all-encompassing. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9, KJV, we read the Lord's words to Paul, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. God's grace is not just enough, it is more than enough. It meets us in our weakness and transforms it into strength. Consider the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. The father's response to his wayward son's return is a powerful illustration of God's grace. Despite the son's failings, the father welcomes him back with open arms, a robe, and a feast. This is how our heavenly father receives us with abundant, overflowing grace. The abundance of God's grace is a theme that resonates throughout scripture. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 8, KJV, Paul writes, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. The word, riches, here suggests a vast, inexhaustible supply. God's grace is not doled out in meager portions, but lavished upon us in abundance. This abundance is beautifully illustrated in the story of Jesus turning water into wine at the wedding in Cana, John chapter 2 verse 111. Not only did Jesus provide wine when it had run out, but he provided an abundance of the finest quality. This miracle serves as a metaphor for the way God's grace operates in our lives, it doesn't just meet our needs, it exceeds them. The abundance of God's grace is also evident in its ability to cover all our sins, no matter how grievous. King David, after committing adultery and murder, experienced this overwhelming grace. In Psalm chapter 51 verse 1, KJV, he cries out, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions. David understood that God's grace was vast enough to cover even his most terrible sins. Moreover, God's grace is not a one-time gift, but a continuous flow of his favor. In Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22-23, KJV, we read, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Each day, we wake to a fresh supply of God's grace, sufficient for whatever challenges we may face. The abundance of God's grace is perhaps most powerfully demonstrated in the cross of Christ. Romans chapter 5 verse 20, KJV, tells us, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. No matter how great our sin, God's grace is always greater. It's like an ocean of mercy that drowns our sea of iniquity. This abundant grace doesn't just save us, it empowers us. Paul, who described himself as the chief of sinners, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15, became one of the most influential apostles through the power of God's grace. He testifies in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10, KJV, but by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me, understanding the abundance of God's grace should fill us with confidence and joy.
We need never fear that we've exhausted God's grace or that our needs are too great for his supply. As the hymn writer Robert Robinson penned, O oh to grace how great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let this truth sink deep into your heart. God's grace is more than enough for you. Whatever your struggle, whatever your need, whatever your past failures or future fears, God's grace is sufficient. It meets you in your weakness and transforms that very weakness into a showcase for his strength. Like the father in the parable of the prodigal son, our heavenly father stands ready to lavish his grace upon us, not because we deserve it, but because his love for us knows no bounds. 3. Grace in action, God's grace is not a passive concept. It is active and transformative in our lives. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 12, KJV, tells us, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, in this present world. Grace doesn't just save us, it teaches us. It empowers us to live lives that honor God. Through grace, we are enabled to turn away from ungodliness and to embrace righteousness. This is the transformative power of grace in action. The active nature of God's grace is a profound truth that impacts every aspect of our Christian walk. It's not merely a theological concept to be understood but a dynamic force to be experienced and lived out daily. Let's explore this further. 1. Grace transforms our identity. When we receive God's grace, it fundamentally changes who we are. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, KJV, declares, Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Grace doesn't just modify our behavior, it transforms our very being. We move from being slaves to sin to becoming children of God, Romans chapter 8 verse 15 16. 2. Grace empowers our obedience. Often, we struggle with the idea that we must earn God's favor through our obedience. However, grace turns this notion on its head. It's God's grace that enables our obedience. As Paul writes in Romans chapter 6 verse 14, KJV, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Grace provides the power to live in a way that pleases God. 3. Grace fuels our spiritual growth. Peter encourages believers to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 18, KJV. Grace is not static, it's the environment in which we develop spiritually. Like a plant needs sunlight and water to grow, we need God's grace to mature in our faith. 4. Grace enables our service. Each believer is gifted by God's grace to serve in the body of Christ. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10, KJV, instructs, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Our abilities to serve and minister are manifestations of God's grace in action. 5. Grace sustains us in trials. When we face difficulties, it's God's grace that carries us through. Paul's testimony about his thorn in the flesh illustrates this beautifully. God's response to Paul's plea for relief was, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9, KJV. Grace doesn't always remove our struggles, but it always sustains us through them. 6. Grace motivates our evangelism. The realization of God's amazing grace in our lives should compel us to share this good news with others. Paul saw his ministry as a stewardship of God's grace, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 2. Our testimony of God's grace in action becomes a powerful tool for evangelism. 7. Grace shapes our relationships. Understanding the grace we've received should influence how we treat others. Colossians chapter 4 verse 6, KJV, advises, Let your speech be alway with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Grace should characterize our interactions, leading us to forgive as we've been forgiven and to extend kindness even when it's undeserved. 8. Grace inspires our worship. When we truly grasp the magnitude of God's grace, our response can only be heartfelt worship. As Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28, KJV, exhorts, Wherefore we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. In all these ways and more, we see that grace is not a passive concept but an active force in the believer's life. It's the power of God working in us, 
transforming us from the inside out. As we yield to this grace, we find ourselves enabled to live in ways we never could through our own efforts. Let us, therefore, not receive the grace of God in vain, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 1, but rather allow it to work mightily in us. May we be ever conscious of this amazing grace, relying on it daily, and may our lives be a testament to the transformative power of God's grace in action. 4. Responding to God's grace, how should we respond to such an incredible gift? First and foremost, with gratitude. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, KJV, encourages us to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Our lives should be a song of thanksgiving for the grace we've received. But our response shouldn't stop there. We are called to be conduits of God's grace to others. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32, KJV, instructs us, and be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you, as we have received grace, so should we extend it to others. In our interactions, in our forgiveness, in our love, we are to reflect the grace that God has so freely given to us. Let's delve deeper into how we can respond to God's grace. 1. Embrace humility. Recognizing God's grace should lead us to humility. As Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10, KJV, but by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Understanding that all we have and all we are is due to God's grace eliminates any ground for boasting or self-righteousness. 2. Live in grateful obedience. Gratitude for God's grace should naturally lead to a desire to please him. Romans chapter 12 verse 1, KJV, exhorts us, I beseech you therefore, Brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Our obedience is not to earn God's favor, but to express our thankfulness for the grace we've already received. 3. Extend forgiveness. Having been forgiven much, we should readily forgive others. Jesus' parable of the unforgiving servant in Matthew chapter 18 verse 21-35 powerfully illustrates this principle. As we've experienced God's forgiveness through his grace, we're called to extend that same forgiveness to others, even when it's difficult. 4. Show compassion. God's grace towards us should soften our hearts towards others, especially those who are struggling or marginalized. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, KJV, encourages us to come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. As we've received mercy and grace, we should extend the same to those in need around us. 5. Share the gospel. The good news of God's grace is too wonderful to keep to ourselves. We should be eager to share this message with others. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 15, KJV, instructs us to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. 6. Serve others. Grace empowers us to serve. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10, KJV, says, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. We're called to use our God-given gifts to serve others, recognizing that these gifts are manifestations of God's grace. 7. Pursue holiness. God's grace doesn't give us license to sin. Rather, it empowers us to live holy lives. Titus chapter 2 verse 11, 12, KJV, reminds us that God's grace teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, and to live soberly, righteously, and godly. Our pursuit of holiness is a response to God's grace, not an attempt to earn it. 8. Cultivate thankfulness. Gratitude should permeate every aspect of our lives. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17, KJV, exhorts, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. A thankful heart is a fitting response to God's abundant grace. 9. Rest in God's love. Understanding God's grace allows us to rest securely in his love. Romans chapter 8 verse 38-39 assures us that nothing can separate us from God's love. This security frees us from fear and anxiety, enabling us to live confidently in God's grace. 10. Extend grace in our speech. Our conversations should be characterized by grace. 
Colossians chapter 4 verse 6, KJV, advises, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Our words should build up, encourage, and reflect the grace we've received. In essence, responding to God's grace involves a complete reorientation of our lives. It affects how we view ourselves, how we treat others, how we approach challenges, and how we understand our purpose. As recipients of this amazing grace, we're called to be living testimonies of its transformative power, reflecting God's grace in every aspect of our lives. May we never cease to marvel at the grace we've received, and may our lives be a continuous response of gratitude, obedience, and love towards God and others. 5. The ultimate expression of grace. The ultimate expression of God's grace is found in the person of Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 verse 14, KJV, declares, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the embodiment of God's grace. Through his life, death, and resurrection, he offers us redemption and eternal life. Romans chapter 5 verse 8, KJV, reminds us, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is the heart of grace, that Christ died for us, not because we were deserving, but because of God's great love. In Jesus, we see grace personified grace that reaches out to the undeserving, that transforms lives, and that offers hope and salvation. Let's delve deeper into how Jesus Christ is the ultimate expression of God's grace. 1. The Incarnation, the very act of God becoming man in the person of Jesus Christ is an astounding display of grace. Philippians chapter 2 verse 6 8, KJV, tells us that Christ, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. This voluntary humbling of the divine to take on human flesh is grace beyond comprehension. 2. His earthly ministry. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus demonstrated grace in action. He touched the untouchable, loved the unlovable, and forgave the unforgivable. Consider his interaction with the woman at the well, John chapter 4, his forgiveness of the woman caught in adultery, John chapter 8, or his healing of the leper, Mark 1. Each encounter was a vivid display of God's grace reaching out to those society had rejected. 3. His teachings, Jesus' parables often centered on the theme of grace. The prodigal son, Luke chapter 15, the workers in the vineyard, Matthew chapter 20, and the Pharisee and the tax collector, Luke chapter 18, all illustrate different aspects of God's unmerited favor. Through these stories, Jesus taught that God's grace defies human logic and expectations. 4. His sacrificial death, the cross stands as the ultimate symbol of God's grace. As 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21, KJV, puts it, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus, the sinless one, took upon himself the punishment we deserved. This substitutionary atonement is the pinnacle of grace the innocent dying for the guilty. 5. His resurrection. Christ's resurrection is a powerful demonstration of grace triumphant over sin and death. Romans chapter 4 verse 25, KJV, states that Jesus was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. His resurrection assures us that God's grace is not just a temporary reprieve, but an eternal solution to our sin problem. 6. His ongoing intercession, even now, the risen Christ continues to express God's grace through his intercessory work. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, KJV, tells us that, He is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Christ's ongoing advocacy for us before the Father is a continual outpouring of grace. 7. His promise of return, the promise of Christ's return and the establishment of his eternal kingdom is yet another expression of God's grace. Titus chapter 2 verse 13, KJV, speaks of, looking for that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Saviour Jesus Christ. This future grace gives us hope and purpose in our present circumstances. 8. His offer of relationship. Perhaps most astoundingly, Jesus doesn't just save us from afar. He invites us into intimate relationship with him. 
John chapter 15 verse 15, KJV, records Jesus saying, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doth, but I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. This offer of friendship with the divine is grace beyond measure. In Jesus Christ, we see grace that is not just a concept, but a person. Grace that doesn't just forgive, but transforms. Grace that doesn't just save from punishment, but invites into relationship. Grace that doesn't just offer second chances, but new life altogether. As we contemplate Christ as the ultimate expression of God's grace, we should be moved to worship, to gratitude, and to a desire to know him more deeply. We should be inspired to extend this same grace to others, knowing that we are called to be imitators of Christ, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. May we never lose sight of the wonder of God's grace as revealed in Jesus Christ. May it continually amaze us, transform us, and flow through us to a world in desperate need of this amazing grace. Conclusion, as we conclude our reflection on God's grace, let us remember that it is indeed more than we deserve. It is a gift that transforms, empowers, and sustains us. May we live each day in the light of this grace, continually grateful for God's unmerited favor, and eager to share it with others. Closing Prayer Heavenly Father, we thank you for your amazing grace. We are humbled by your love and mercy. Help us to live lives that reflect the grace we have received. May we be instruments of your grace in this world, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with all we encounter. In his precious name, we pray. Amen.